What's up guys? Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the gumball tool in order to edit different things inside a Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the gumball tool is basically a tool that's designed to kind of simplify the process of moving things around in a 3D space inside of Rhino. So you can activate the gumball tool by going to the bottom of your page and clicking on the option for gumball. And so notice how if you have that turned off and you click on an object, it's just going to look something like this. Um, you can come in here and like drag the individual vertices of objects around, other things like that. But if you have the gumball activated, notice how you're going to get this kind of like widget looking thing around your selection. And so really anything that you click on, it's going to pop up the little widget, right? So no matter if I'm clicking on a 3D shape like this or a flat shape, it's going to pop up this little, little tool. And so basically what this is going to do, if we take a look at this, is it's going to give us a lot of control over the way that we can edit things in the 3D space in Rhino, right? So um, first off, you're going to notice that you've got these different colored arrows. The different colored arrows are indicating the different like directions that you can move things with this tool. Notice how this tool is specifically designed to help you move things along the model axes like this. We'll talk a little bit more about making that more precise in a second, but in addition to having the ability to move things, you also have the ability to rotate things by either clicking and dragging on these different uh, these different curved lines, or you can also single click on them and type in a value. And note that you can do that with the move function as well. So let's say I wanted to move this um, value of three on the red axis. I could just single click on it, type in a value of three, and it'll move it three. If you wanted to move it the other direction, you type in negative three and it would move it back. So you've got move, you've got rotate, and again, remember you can type in a value. So I could rotate this 45 degrees just by clicking on that and uh, typing in a value of 45 degrees. And then you've also got scale functions in here. And the scale functions are going to allow you to scale objects along the different axes. So let's take a look at our cone real quick for that one. So if we select our cone and then click and drag our scale function, notice how it's going to scale it in the direction that we drag. One thing about that is if you hold the shift key, notice how it's going to uniformly scale this object. So instead of scaling it just on one axis, it's going to scale the over the overall object instead. So um, if you do that with a flat object like this one, so if I click and drag this and then I hold the shift key, notice how it's going to uniformly scale this on both the red and the green axes like this. So you can use that to uniformly scale an object inside of Rhino. And so not only can you use this tool for those simple functions like moving, so you can also use this in order to extrude objects inside of Rhino as well. So for example, if I mouse over this, notice how I'm getting this blue dot right here um, when I select this rectangle. So if I take this whole thing, I select it like this, and then I click and drag the blue dot, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to extrude my edge upward like this. So I can use this in order to create 3D shapes inside a Rhino. And so that can be valuable for creating things like uh, boxes, or you can also use it to create things like cylinders, other things like that. So one thing to notice about that is because I was extruding a curve, this is extruding these into a non-solid shape. And so the problem with this, right, is that these aren't solid objects, but since they're very simple shapes like this, what you can do instead is you can just select the objects and just type in the value of cap. And when you cap that, it's going to go in and it's gonna add a cap to these shapes like this. So if I type in cap here, it's going to cap this shape. Now this is a solid object. And so one other thing to be aware of with this is previously we were extruding curves. However, if you had a planar surface like this one, so you've got this flat surface with a face inside of it, and we were to use the extrusion function in here, that's going to extrude this up and notice how it creates it as a solid shape. So it's already capped automatically. So you don't have to use the cap function in order to do that. So you can do that in order to quickly create solids in Rhino. And so one other thing to be aware of is when you're using that extrusion function like this, if you hold the shift key, notice how that's going to extrude this in both directions. So you can use this in order to extrude something up like this, but also have it move the same distance down inside of your 3D space. So if you do need to extrude something around a central point, but have it extrude both directions, you can just hold the shift key when you're doing that. All right, so now let's say that we have an object like this one, which doesn't align with our world axes, right? So if you look at this, it's uh, it's been rotated on multiple different axes. So even though the red and green of the world run this way, 
the object itself is not aligned with that. Well, the problem with that is that can get a little bit tricky because sometimes you need this to align with the actual object right here. Well, what you can do in that particular situation is if you right click on this, there's options down here to affect the way the gumball works but notice how there's an option in here for align to object. And so if I select that option for align to object, it's going to align the axes of your gumball with your actual object itself, right? So now I can move this along the blue, red, or green um, directions of this object right here. So you can also, if you have a shape like this one right here, you can also, in addition to having the auto align function, which is right here, there's also an option in here to relocate the gumball. And so if you activate the relocate gumball, what that's gonna do is that's going to allow you to snap to these points and set the direction that the gumball is going to face. So notice how I can use this to set my red, blue, and green directions like this by snapping to different points. So if you do want a little bit more control over how that gumball is situated on your object, you can use the relocate gumball function in order to do that. And then if you wanna put it back the way it was, just click on the button for reset gumball like this. All right, so another helpful function in here is there's also an option for snappy dragging. Right, so if you have smooth dragging selected, notice how I can move this around and nothing's actually happening, right? So um, like it doesn't really interact or affect the other objects like this. However, if you turn on the option for snappy dragging, what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to snap to different things inside of your model. So notice how I can use this in order to snap the center of this object to match the center of this other object right here. This can be especially helpful if you're trying to align things so for example, if I jump to top down view right here and click and drag on the green, notice how I can mouse over this end right here and that's going to allow me to align this object with this other object really easily. So the snappy dragging can be especially helpful for precision movement of objects inside of Rhino. All right, and then one other function that I really like about this is, um, and this is something that comes maybe a little bit from uh, my background in SketchUp and um, maybe some of the tools in like, uh, like Revit and Navisworks, but um, the way that this rotates right now, if you kind of get off like this, right? So if I don't have this object centered, it's kind of just rotating around the center of my view right here. But what I really want to do is I want to orbit around this object right here, right? So I want to keep that kind of like centered. What you can do is you can right click and you can select the option for rotate view around gumball. And so once you do that, that means that whenever you orbit, whatever your gumball is, that's going to be your central location of the way that things are going to orbit inside a Rhino. So I can use this, notice how now whatever I select is becoming the central point around which things rotate in the 3D space. This can allow you to be really precise with your movements and your rotations, which is something that can be especially helpful if you're doing like architectural modeling or something like that. Um, otherwise, those kind of like bigger buildings and stuff can kind of get away from you. So for me, that is a super, super helpful tool. I'm really excited to know that that's there. All right, so another place where the gumball can be really helpful is this also allows you to create copies inside a Rhino. So let's say you have this object, right? And you wanna create a copy of it. Well, all you have to do is just hold down the Alt key with this tool selected click and drag, notice how you get the little plus button in here. Well, when you get the little plus or the plus icon, when you get the little plus icon, that basically indicates that you are now in copy mode right here. So if you tap the alt key, that's gonna put you in copy mode. So you can use that to really quickly create copies of objects. And I can do this in any direction, right? So if I select these, click and drag, and I tap the alt key. Again, notice how I'm going into copy mode right here. Now, one thing I wish you could do that I don't think you can is I wish that you could type in a number of copies and have it create an array, but that's more of a SketchUp function, but it is something that I kind of wish that it had, but this is still a really quick way to be able to create copies inside of Rhino. And then one other thing to be aware of, and again, this is another thing that's especially helpful if you're used to like the sticky geometry inside of SketchUp, but what, what this is going to do is this is going to allow you not only to select objects like this, but you can also, if you hold the control and shift key, you can select sub objects inside of your model. So 
Notice how, for example, if I single click on this right now, it's gonna select this entire object, right? All the different surfaces, everything like that. Well, sometimes you don't wanna edit the entire object. You wanna make some changes to a piece of the object. Well, what you can do is you can hold the control and shift keys together and then click on something. Notice how that allows me to select sub portions of an object. So now if I click and drag this, notice how it's actually moving the end piece of this cube like this. So you can use this in order to select surfaces. You can also do a control shift and click on like a vertex. Notice how this gives you a little selection menu right here, but you can click on the vertex and then you can just move the vertex around. And so notice when you do that, that's actually affecting the entire shape like this. So you can use this in order to kind of customize your shapes. So again, notice how I can do this, select multiple different vertices. If I want to do that, I can also do a control shift click and select multiple different faces and then move those around. So notice how when I move these faces around, it's actually kind of deforming the geometry to follow along with that. And so that can be especially helpful if you're creating something with like cylinders or something like that. So what you can do is you could do a control shift and select the surface. Well, notice how I could extrude this up in order to create a completely new face up here, but then I could do a control shift and I could select this and we could start using the scale function in here. So I could scale this in. If I hold the shift key, notice how that's going to scale this entire surface in like this. Well, then you could also extrude inward like this. So again, this is a lot like the SketchUp push-pull tool in that sense. So notice how when you extruded that inward, that's actually making this hollow where we selected that shape. So you can use this in order to um, not only like proportionally edit geometry like this, but also to start making things that kind of like recess into objects and other things like that. So for me, this is quickly becoming the primary way that I edit geometry inside of Rhino, but I'd love to hear from you. What do you think about this tool? Are you using it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.